such as 19 years old. Interesting fact that Let's Go sound sound clip was taken from the 1960s Batman. You best put young Jack to bed. This episode is absolute filth. What's that? Ah, yes, I will be writing a strongly worded comment. Boom! Grandmaster 111. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Now, ladles and jelly spoons, may I welcome... It might interest you to know that the symbol 2002 PlayStation 2 Classic, The Getaway, took almost three years to make. The development team recreated 40 square kilometres that's about 25 square miles of central London in which the game is based. Over 500,000 images were taken by the developers of central London streets and locations that feature in the game. Yeah. Pat, have you started the video already? Ah, I can't always be waiting for you, lad. It's Friday. Keith and I need to get down Dob and Duck. Friday night's pie and pipe night. Right, so the getaway. An action-adventure open-world video game developed by Team Soho and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation 2. The Getaway is inspired by British gangster films, most notably Get Carter. The original, mind, with Michael Caine in. Not that odd remake they made with Sylvester Stallone. What were they thinking? What am I thinking? Bloody hell, come on Keith, it's bloody ten past. All the best pies will have gone by now. Initially, the release of the game was to coincide with the launch of the PlayStation 2 in Europe in the year 2000, but it was delayed by 27 months due to the difficulty of recreating large areas of London in high resolution. Parts of the getaway feature in various episodes of Graham Duff's Ideal. The game focuses on two characters, each with their own plot points. Mark Hammond, an ex-bank robber, and Detective Constable Frank Carter, a police officer in service with the Flying Squad. Both plots run parallel and intersect before concluding in the finale of the game. A sequel entitled The Getaway Black Monday was released in 2004. Have you ever heard of or indeed played The Getaway? Let us know in the comment section down below if you have any fond memories or interesting facts about the game that we might have missed. The game didn't feature any on-screen indicators as to how much health, ammo or time you had left. When you got shot, hurt in the game, your character would bleed through their clothing and limp holding their chest. The amount of blood on your clothes and speed you moved at indicated how much damage you'd sustained. When you rested against a wall, ah, no bloody health kits in game, you know, you regained your health. He's here. Who is Hammond? Oh, fuck. Unlucky, eh? Your character would use two pistols or one machine gun slash shotgun at a time. When the machine gun slash shotgun emptied out, your character would drop the empty gun and pull out their pistols. When you started to run low on pistol ammunition, your character would drop one pistol, indicating that you were running low on ammunition and needed to find some fast. driving missions, the game music would indicate how much time you had left to finish the mission. The music got more and more urgent as the mission progressed until you either finished the level or passed the time limit and had to try again. Now, if we here at the Orbital Broadcast Bunker were sponsored, this is the point of the video in which I would tell you to go and check out the link for Babelfish, HelloFresh, Crunchyroll, ExpressVPN for 20% off with code WHITEMUFFIN. But alas, we're not sponsored. That's probably because it's really hard to find letterbox on Orbital Broadcast Bunker. I'm not here. Fair point. But it is still true that we're not sponsored. So we do ask that to help us keep the lights on and the oxygen flowing, that if you have enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel and or checking out some of our other social media pages. They're all linked in the description down below. Now, back to the video. An interesting little touch in the driving missions. Instead of an arrow on screen telling you which way to go, aka crazy taxi, before you came to an intersection, the indicators of the car would start flashing, telling you if you needed to go left or right. If no indicator was flashing, you were headed in the right direction. If you were heading in the opposite direction, one indicator would flash until you turned 180 degrees. When you got to where you were supposed to be going, both indicators would flash to indicate you should stop, exit the car and explore. The 
game was initially rated by the OFLC, the Australian Rating Organisation, as MA15+, for medium violence levels. But five weeks later on, after its release, the OFLC revised their initial ratings. While still being classified as MA15+, it was now for high violence levels. But that is not all, my friends! Only five days after that revision, the game was revised a second time, now with the rating classification changing from MA15+, to RC. That is refused classification in Australia. That means that from that day, it was illegal to exhibit, rent or sell the game in Australia. Well, that's it for another week. Is it everything you wanted it to be, Pat? Well, it would have been lad, but uh, you see someone got to me a very thoughtful gift over the uh, festive period, an old Barossican nose flunk, but for the life of me, I can't work out how to play it. Now, hey, where are you? Come on lad. It's probably because you don't have an old Barossican nose, Pat. And with that, cheerio. See you next time.